My name is Sharon Center. I'm a professor of veterinary internal medicine at Cornell University, and I'm representing an international group working uh, regarding excessive copper in canine foods that are beyond the tolerance for many healthy dogs. Please advance. Well, I have no uh, financial uh, conflicting relationship to disclose. We published a white paper in the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association as an open, uh, an open access commentary in February of this year, summarizing objective data that validate our concern that allowances for dietary copper mandated by regulatory agencies exceed physiologic tolerance for many healthy dogs since modification of food grade copper premix supplements in approximately 1993. Please advance. Our mission is to generate awareness of this problem, encourage communications amongst clinicians, pathologists, and pet owners, and to communicate the severity and urgency of this problem to the regulatory agencies. Please advance. Commercial dog foods have simplified the husbandry and improved health of pet dogs. Because dogs are fed the same daily ration, dietary formulations can have a cumulative impact. There is a notable relationship between dietary formulations and a progressive increase in liver copper concentration over time since the popularization of commercial dog food in the late 1940s, highest values realized since the most recent change in copper supplements. Please advance. As the liver adjusts copper homeostasis, this organ manifests the most serious and overt injury with copper accumulation. Copper provokes oxidative injury through a complex series of interrelated chemical reactions. Importantly, the net reaction is generation of the injurious hydroxyl radical that can independently cause cell death or worsen coexistent diseases. Please advance. Copper associated liver injury in dogs is insidious and onset. With chronicity, it can be lethal, leading to cirrhosis, middle panel, or panlobular necrosis, far right panel. A healthy dog liver is shown for comparison. Please advance. In 2013, a colleague and I published a manuscript where we used the Labrador Retriever as the canary in the coal mine to demonstrate the impact of altered dietary copper regulations. We measured liver copper in dogs with and without hepatitis in subsets representing eras before and after altered copper guidelines. Significantly higher liver copper concentrations coordinated with the revised dietary copper recommendations. You'll need to advance twice. Early recognition of this disorder is difficult as these dogs do not demonstrate signs of illness. Rather, they display increased serum ALT activity, one of the liver enzymes that vacillates. Notably, any of these dogs frolicking on the beach could have early copper-associated hepatopathy, as could your dog right now at home. With more advanced disease, these dogs develop obvious laboratory and physical and imaging findings indicative of uh, severe liver injury. These dogs are more difficult to treat and have a more dismal prognosis. Please advance. Definitive diagnosis requires liver biopsy. This is typically by laparoscopic or open surgical methods because needle biopsies are less accurate and mere aspirates of the liver cannot ascertain this diagnosis. Definitive diagnosis requires pathologic inspection of tissues and reconciliation with the degree of hepatic copper accumulation. Please advance. Costs associated with this disorder involve the diagnostic and treatment expenses that can each range as high as $5,000. This condition also impacts pets with surgical and anesthetic risks and biopsy associated discomfort, as well as owner emotional distress. Please advance. So the question is, how did we get here? Please advance. This stems from modification of food grade copper additives in commercial dog food based on a small study in purpose-bred dogs in 1993, published only as an abstract that concluded low bioavailability of copper oxide, precluding its use as a dietary supplement. 
This data was never published as a peer-reviewed manuscript. The baseline diet was not distinguished in the abstract. The outcome recommendation was to replace copper oxide with highly bioavailable copper chelates. In application of this recommendation, the baseline dietary copper content is not considered. And importantly, this change was instituted despite no evidence of copper insufficiency in any pet dog that we know of fed commercial diets before the recommended change. Please advance. Pet food manufacturers are obligated to follow NRC and AFCO recommendations. The abstract recommendations were inactive, irrespective of base diet copper content, typically not clearly defined by labeling. At present, a standardized premix containing bioavailable copper chelates is added to canine formulated diets. The net impact is an increase in bioavailable copper in commercial dog foods. Please advance. At this point, it's important to clarify that intolerance to dietary copper is not secondary to a more primary liver disease in the dog and cannot be assigned to more simple genetic mutations, with the exception of a single breed, the Bedlington Terrier. Please advance. You have 30 seconds. Pet food companies cannot independently make corrective changes without NRC-based FDA recommendations for AFCO regulation. Historic data supports copper adequacy without copper additives. As we are exceeding tolerated copper intake for many dogs, we believe that copper should be scaled back to estimated intake before the recent change. Because copper oxide lacks bioavailability, it is probable that base diets deliver biologically adequate copper intake. There's one last slide. Change can and should be made without studies to determine minimum copper intake. The FDA and AFCO need to empower pet food companies to decline copper additives if governing actions are delayed. We provide evidence in the white paper I cited. I just would like to say that any of the members of our working group are available to assist with the mitigation of this avoidable and tragic nutritionally provoked canine illness. Thanks so much.